Welcome back. This video looks at part of speech tagging, which is described in Chapter 6. At the end of the chapter, I have this list of parts of speech that's commonly used in part of speech taggers. Notice there's a lot of different kinds of nouns. A basic noun, a plural, a proper noun, a plural proper noun. And there are many different forms of verbs. A lemma, and then different things for different tenses in persons. Adjective is JJ. Comparative adjective is JJR. And superlative is JJS, like big, bigger, and biggest. Similarly for adverbs, we have three different forms of the adverb. So part of speech tagging is the process of assigning one of those 50 or so part of speech tags to each token in a sentence. For example, in the sentence, John hates peas, John is a proper noun, hates is a present tense third person singular verb, and peas is an ordinary noun. Part of speech tagging has been around a long time in NLP, and over the decades, many different approaches have been tried. These approaches are worth looking into, not only for historical reasons, but because the techniques can be used in many NLP applications, not just part of speech tagging. The oldest techniques are rules-based approaches. A rules-based approach would first assign to each word the possible part of speech tags from some lexicon that may have been manually constructed. The word form can help identify a tag if it's not in the lexicon. For example, clumsily is probably an adverb because it ends in ly. And then sets of rules help select the tags. We know that most sentences in English start with a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. So after the noun phrase, the frightened girl, the most likely tag for senses between noun and verb is a verb tag. We could model a sentence as a hidden Markov model where the words themselves are what we observe and the part of speech tags are the hidden states. The Viterbi algorithm is a dynamic programming approach that minimizes the amount of computation needed to solve an HMM. We can learn the transition probabilities between states, for example, the probability of transitioning from a personal pronoun to a noun. We can learn these from a large corpus of annotated sentences. So the probability of this sentence would be the probability of transitioning from a personal pronoun to a noun times the probability of transitioning from a noun to VBZ and so forth. Multiplying all these probabilities can lead to underflow, and multiplication is slow, so the probabilities are often stored as log of the probability, so you can just add instead of multiply. Another thing that can be learned from the data is the most likely tags for each word in the vocabulary. Let's say there are about 50 part of speech tags. If we want to tag a sentence of 10 words, that's 50 to the power of 10 computations. Not a good idea. The insight of the Viterbi algorithm is that for each transition from one state to another, of all the possible transitions learned from the data, there's one that's most probable. And we'll just select the most probable. This reduces the number of calculations in our example of 10 tokens in a sentence to 10 times 50 squared. That's still a lot, but at least it's not exponential. In the chapter, I have a link to this page, which is a post by Andrew Viterbi himself, explaining his initial motivation and application of the algorithm. And then he has the central part of the algorithm in this formula. In this formula, m sub j at step k is the sum of metrics that reach state j at time k. In terms of the parsing problem, it would be the sum of the log probabilities for part of speech j at this token in the sequence. The m sub ij is the metric for the transition of state i to state j, and it will be a very small negative number if it's missing. The max portion of the equation selects the most likely path leading from step k minus 1 to step k from all possible paths that have been identified. The state metrics are computed at each step from state to state, 
and the history of the path has to be kept as well. Here I have an implementation of the Viterbi algorithm coded up in PyCharm. And I just want to show a couple of things. First, let's look at the training and the test data. The training data has 10,000 sentences that have been annotated. So each token, there's a slash and a part of speech. And the test data looks the same. When the test data is read in, the parts of speech will be picked off so that predictions can be made and accuracy can be judged. The learning takes place in this function, which I named train. This is the slowest part. So I have a message printout before it's called just to let the user know it's not locked up. What train does is go through all the lines of the training data and then through all of the token tag pairs on every line. So notice I have a loop within a loop. I kept that in for clarity here. This really should be rewritten some other way to be much faster. What it's doing is creating a couple of dictionaries of counts. Once everything's counted, we can calculate the probability of each possible tag for every word in the corpus. And we'll do that by dividing the count of the number of times that word had that tag by the total count of that part of speech in the training data. And notice I took the log here. We'll also get the probability of transitioning from one part of speech to another by dividing the total count of transition from part of speech 1 to part of speech 2 divided by the count of part of speech 1. So I'll run this and you can see that most of the time is involved in this training right here. It takes a second to do that. I have some old code here, forgive my messages. And we see we got an accuracy of almost 89%. I will say that the test data is very much like the train data, so I can't say that it would get this good results on data from a different corpus. In the chapter, I talk about the Brill Tagger, which is kind of a hybrid between rules-based and statistical approaches, because it is rules-based, but the rules are learned from annotated data. I won't discuss it here in the interest of keeping the video short. A lot of modern approaches to part of speech tagging use machine learning. These approaches can get quite complex, but I want to point out a simple approach here that gets good results. This is from Matthew Honnable, who created Spacey, which we'll talk about in a minute. I recommend reading this blog post after we talk about machine learning, and I'll just point out a few things here. The link to the blog post is in the chapter, by the way. It learns from training data, of course, and the data has other features besides the word and part of speech that we've seen in the Viterbi algorithm. He uses features like prefixes, suffixes, and the words in their part of speech on either side of the given word. All these are fed into an average perceptron algorithm. He got about 97% accuracy, which is really good for about 200 lines of code and he has the code available to look at here. I have a link to this ACL page in the summary portion of the chapter. And it compares different part of speech taggers and different approaches. The most accurate approaches, not surprisingly, use some deep neural networks. Let's take another look at NLTK's part of speech tagger. Of all the taggers we'll look at in this NLP series, it's the easiest to use and it gets good results. First we import NLTK. We have some raw text here which we need to tokenize. And it's this list of tokens that's the input to the NLTK part of speech tagger. And we see it did a good job here. Notice something funny though. When I get rid of this comma, it misclassifies brown as a noun. There are a lot of nouns and verbs that have the same form and that can really trip up some taggers. So in this sentence, my sense of danger senses that he has lost his senses. This first sense is correctly identified as a noun, but this senses right here should have been a verb and it was classified as a noun. This senses is correctly identified as a noun, a plural noun. In the sentence, my spidey sense senses danger, it got the senses right in this case. Look at this sentence. This is a little bit tricky. 
They wind back the clock while we chase the wind. It correctly identified that WIND here, in this use case, is a verb, and WIND here is a noun. All right, here's some raw text from Crime and Punishment. First we tokenize it, and then we print out all of the tags. And here I'm just creating some dictionaries of counts and sorting them so we can see which parts of speech are most common. Not surprisingly, it's nouns, prepositions, verbs, in this particular form, determiners, and punctuation. NLTK should meet all of your needs for what we'll be doing in this class. If you want to scale up to larger projects, you might look into Spacey. In this notebook, which is in the GitHub, I have a link to installation instructions. You should be able to install it with pip or pip3. And after you install it, you want to do this line of code here, which will download the pre-trained models. This is the small one. If we replace this SM with MD or BG, we can get the medium or large models. The larger models would be more accurate. So here I'm going to import it and just load the small model. I have some sample text. What we do with text is create a spacey object. This NLP function does that, and I'm calling it doc. And it actually learns a lot while it's creating that object. So here's some of the attributes you can print out. For each token, I've printed out the token, the token lemma, different parts of speech tag depending on different systems, whether or not it's alpha, and whether or not it's a stop word. And there's more attributes than I printed here. A lot of usefulness that we can do in Spacey besides part of speech tagging. Um, you can get noun chunks, extract the verbs, extract named entities. Named entities are entities or nouns or noun phrases that refer to something specific, like a proper noun. Later in the course, we'll look at different types of parses for sentences. One of those is a dependency parse. So just real quick here, I'm showing the dependency parse for this sentence. Notice it also does the part of speech tagging in that process. We'll talk more about sentence parses later in the course. Today I'm going to leave you with a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Parts of speech are metaphors because the whole of nature is a metaphor of the human mind. Okay, that is either really deep or quite insane. I'll leave it up to you to decide. Thank you.